while we're talking about some stocks that have been going wild, uh, you gotta mention Roku in here. So Roku reported some earnings after hours today. This will be released obviously tomorrow, but they report earnings after hours on Thursday. So can't wait to see what in the world happens here. Um, let's just look at the past year for Roku alone. This bad boy in a year has gone up 172%, which is absolutely insane. That's just crazy. From its um, lows right around December of 2018, this thing's up 400%. Holy cow. Um, and this bad boy is a 2017 IPO as well. And as we talk about IPOs, obviously, you know, you see the success in some. Um, you see where some are disasters. For sure, and you see some that find quite a bit of success. This bad boy has found quite a bit of success, and there's no denying it. The first year was pretty lame for it, nothing really major going on. And then, really, since you know, end of 2018, this bad boy's just on a tear. It's still not back to its highs where it reached over a seven, 170 a share, 176.55 is a 52 week high on it, which is crazy. Um, Overall, if you're looking at uh, statistics, because we got to talk about, uh, is this stock worth buying right now after this earnings? We're going to take a look at the earnings and see if. Um, and before you ask, uh, in this hypothetical scenario, obviously, you are Yoda, um, and you're going to be asking, on Roku's talk, do you? That sounded just like him, and I say, no, I don't. Instead, let's take a look here. Uh, we're going to the statistics tab, and we'll see what Roku's rocking right now. Well, right now, um, that's right. Uh, that's right. No PE ratio, and that forward PE ratio is a negative. So, oh, we're in for a we're in for a trick here. Um, obviously, when we talk about buying a stock, you know me, and I'm very much a guy who's focused on profit. When you look at Roku, it is up. Obviously, a nice almost 10% after hours at one point. Right around 6% now. They port, reported an EPS of negative 13 cents per share. Um, okay. Revenue increased nearly 50% year over year, though. Uh, 411 million, which beats by 18.51 million. So, big increase in revenue. There is no denying it. Um, there is no denying it. So, if you really are looking um, historically, this is a company that has been growing revenue quite a bit since 2016 here. Quite a significant bit, um, which is something you definitely should consider. But one thing you should also consider here is this net income line got better um, last year and has proceeded to fall off a cliff again this year. Definitely something worth considering when you're looking at this stock. Even though this earnings was positive, um, your question becomes with this company, where's profitability? Uh, obviously, a company not making, you know, just now, not making a billion dollars over, you know, um, a year period with a market cap of sixteen and a half billion is a concern you could think about. But we'll look at the numbers and see what's going on here and what made this thing pop. So, earnings came with a solid beat of revenue. Expectations as platform sales took off, revenue rose 49%. Uh, the company swung to uh, swung to an operating loss of 17.4 million, as expenses rose 68%. Yikes! That's not that's not the kind of percentage rise you want. You want to decrease in operating expenses, but um, that's quite an increase in expenses. The operating loss was smaller than last quarter's um, 26.5 million, however. So, yeah. I mean, there's a positive way to look at it if you really want to. Um, it added a record 4.6 million incremental active accounts, ending this year with 36.9 million. Um, very good, obviously. That's a very good increase. Um, users streamed 11.7 billion hours, up 60%. Um, ARPU rose which is average revenue per user, in case you were curious. It rose 29% to $23.14 per user. That's pretty good. Um, as we continue to grow video advertising uh, impressions across the platform, including on the Roku channel. So, looking at the streaming decade ahead, 
the company says, um, we predict that by 2024, roughly half of the U.S. TV households will have cut the cord and never had traditional pay TV. Or never had... Interesting. Makes sense. Um, they're really, they're talking about people growing up now. Um, when they grow up, they're not going to ever... Um, you know, the generation growing up now isn't going to be buying cable when they, you know, live out on their own. And most people I know really kind of don't. So it makes sense. Um, I understand where they're coming from from that. Um, cable is slightly on its way out. I think there's definitely still use for it. Uh, in the meantime, I do think that shoot streaming will shoot themselves in the foot to an extent with all these different, everyone has to have their exclusive rights to everything. I think people will shoot themselves in the foot doing that. Uh, and that's really what's going to help keep cable alive a little bit longer. But overall, you see revenue by platform rose 71% and by player rose 22%. Um, gross platform breakout, platform up um, 48% for gross profit, um, by the way. So profit was up 48% for the platform, but down 2.9 million in terms of player. So they actually lost money from the player sector. Interesting. Um, for quarter one, it's guiding revenue of thirty million to three hundred ten million. I, I feel like I can't speak today. Three hundred million to three hundred ten million, and a net loss of sixty million to. Oh my gosh! Do you see that? Holy freaking crap! Net loss of sixty million to fifty-five million. Excuse me. And a. Full year guiding $1.58 billion to $1.62 billion in revenue, but a net loss between $180 million and $160 million? Holy crap! That is, that's, that's horrendous. That's horrendous. This is the era we live in, in this stock market, in which these companies are getting so extremely high valued that just continue to lose money hand over fist. I mean, that's, that's an incredible growth in. A growth and loss, if that makes any sense to you. That is horrible. Um, I hate everything about that. So, yikes. You already know my opinion probably right now. <laughs> Unless they can please me with any sort of news. Um, I'm not into this stock right now. Just because that is... It's incredible growth, revenue-wise. But if they're going to continue to lose more and more, I hate everything about it. I'm sorry. You know I'm negative like that. Golly, and if I miss out on some of these, are, I mean, I've definitely missed out on some gains. There's no doubt about it. Um, I've missed out on this stock, but I'm not too upset because this is one of those stocks that could implode um, with awful just loss like that. Let's look at the letter to shareholders. Ah, that's what we're going to look at. Total net revenue grew 52% year over year. Good for them. Uh, platform revenue increased 78%. Gross profit was up 49%. Um, obviously, that's not net income, though. Uh, Roku had a 9.8 incremental active users in 2019. Streaming hours increased by 16.3 billion. That's nice. Record um, 40.3 billion hours. Average revenue per user increased five dollars 19 cents year over year. Very good. They're just spending a lot of freaking money. Gosh dang. Um, Roku monetized video ad impressions more than doubled again in 2019. Um, for the full year, nearly one in three smart TVs sold in the U.S. were Roku TVs. So one thing, if you don't know about Roku, they're partnered with several different brands. Some of the most notable ones uh, being a Hitachi and TCL. Probably the most common brands you'll see as far as what carries them. Um, they come in with Roku built in. So um, They have a whole suite of TVs, that they, they TV companies that they work with uh, to have it built in. So... Definitely something to consider, and obviously they pay a lot of money to to do that. There's no doubt about it. But a lot of it's it's platform recognition, so um, it's it's important for them. So overall, we saw these numbers um, in that uh, little snippet there. Um, yikes! So, and this is obviously your forecast here. That's just a rough loss, a rough loss, but adjusted. EBITDA, you see that? Potentially, potentially could break even. Am I right? What can I say? I don't know how that's going to look, but we're going to look at it. So let's look at the key investments in 2020. Um, 
So advertising, TV advertising is in the early stages of moving to streaming, no doubt about it. I'm creating tremendous opportunity for Roku as a leader in OTT uh, advertising platform. Um, the Roku channel is a key driver in engagement uh, and monetization for ourselves and our content partners. It includes a personalized experience with free ad-supported live and premium subscription content, Roku TV. Similar to the revolution of smartphones, smart TV software is the process of evolving from proprietary software stacks to licensed operating systems. Um, <clears throat> we have developed the world's only purpose-built licensed TV operating software that, when combined with our rich TV hardware reference designs, um, can make TV brands more successful. Interesting. Interesting. So in international, we believe around the globe, TV viewing will continue uh, to transition to streaming TV. Obviously, it doesn't take a rocket scientist to understand that one. We have already launched Roku TV models in the U.S., Canada, Mexico, and U.K., and Brazil. Um, we believe we are in the early stages of global opportunity for Roku. Cool for them. Obviously, advertising is a key, key thing through there. Um, through 2019, our growth and monetization video ad impressions significantly outpace streaming our growth. Um, in addition, 175 or 88% of ad ages top 200 spent with Roku. Okay, um, that's very cool. That's very cool. In 2019, all top 10 tech uh, technology and telecom advertisers, as well as the top 10 consumer package products spent with Roku. People advertising on the platform. Very good for them. Obviously here, everyone loves their lovely Roku home screen, don't they? We all love it. Um, I do have TVs with Roku built in, to be fair. So, um, <clears throat> the Roku channel, obviously they're building a compelling experience through expanded services and content capabilities. Um, Roku Channel reached active accounts with an estimated 56 million viewers. Um, Parks Associated reported that the Roku Channel is one of the top three ad-based OTT services among U.S. broadband households. Um, growth growth in streaming in hours through the Roku Channel at an even faster rate than our overall streaming hours uh, growth in 2019 by continually expanding the quality and scope of ad support offering, uh, launching new subscription channels, and investing in our product and capabilities. Cool for them. More than 55 live linear channels. We also um, continue to expand to studio and network movie uh, and TV content. Cool, cool, cool. Um, <clears throat> so, obviously, fun stuff. They're going to be working on international, no doubt about it. <sighs> You, you consider some things. Um, what what are we going to be actually seeing here? That's what concerns me. So, um, obviously, we see our outlook as we saw before. Um, I'm concerned um, by the uh, issues with profit. There's no doubt. I think the inability to make money um, is concerning. But if what I'm seeing is correct for full year they could potentially be close to break even I don't know how that seems feasible if you're gonna lose hundred eighty million dollars in the first quarter we'll take a look um, at what that looks like this is not a stock I feel like getting into right now the valuation is it's not there I mean I don't even know how you're valuing this company at this point it doesn't really make sense to me um, how the it has derived the value it has it's all obviously related to hype um, a company growing revenue super fast. People buy into it very quickly, um, and that's that's really what you see here. So, uh, if we look, obviously they they did increase their cash and cash equivalents position quite a bit this quarter, um, which is pretty exciting. Gotta love what they're doing there, um, which is an increase in accounts receivable as well. But um, if you look at obviously your current liabilities of uh, you know accounts payable of one hundred fifteen thousand. But overall, your total current liability is three hundred fifty-eight thousand. Um, you know, really, it's million. By the way, in case you're curious, that's my bad. You know what I'm saying? Um, it's there's some 
there's some concerns. There's no doubt about it. So really, a total liability of 771 million. It's not a it's not a horrendous balance sheet, but the question is long term profitability is my concern. I don't want to poo poo on the stock, but for me, if you can't post even a positive PE ratio, I don't know if I'm going to consider your stock. Now, maybe a couple years down the road, potentially, but it's stocks like this. And again, I could be wrong. In times of bad market conditions, stocks like this can get absolutely devastated because there is no basis for the value, really. The value is built entirely off of hype, and when that hype in the market dies down, people are going to be selling hard. They're going to be selling hard, um, and stocks like this can get absolutely devastated. That's just a warning, but again, I hope you enjoy. Um, please, please be careful here with Roku stock, but this is just an analysis. You can do what you want with it.